Gloria Stadium, my friends. Happy full moon. Had to wait a little while for the moon to rise above the clouds. Let's zoom out for a second just so you can see. Here we go. So the full moon is tomorrow morning. In the next couple of days, our big energy days. Today, we're going to talk about winter, the end of winter, since uh, equinox is coming up. We're talking a little bit about the full moon. But tomorrow, sunrise, do a sunrise video, or a moonset video. We'll be talking about the full moon then, doing our celebration. And Wednesday's holy, the celebration of colors, unity, community, and love with the Katagarata. And we've got a porpoise here, a dolphin. Saw one earlier. So right now we're going to test if the universe is listening and hearing me. Not only listening, but hearing me. Are we going to try? The dolphin's right here. Ten feet away. I'll be going into Treasure Island at 117th Avenue, not 124th. Arriving around 6.30 a.m. near Hatakati. Never gets old, does it? Never. <laughs> Anytime the dolphins come, people love to take photos and shoot video. And it never, I agree, it never gets old. So tonight, we're going to talk about winter. We're going to talk about dreams. to death. When we celebrate the cycles of the moon, we're celebrating the cycles of breath, and we're celebrating the cycles of life. And during our manifestation today, there's still a little more time to breathe in, to breathe in that abundance of the universe. Urahatakanayata. The full moon is analogous to a full set of lungs, where the only thing we have to do, only thing left to do, is to breathe out. But that's at 7.40 a.m. tomorrow morning, Eastern Time. So we still have a couple more moments <laughs> to breathe in. <sighs> Universe, are you listening? Niaratatar. I am allowing the abundance of the universe. I breathe in those last few sips. Before I let go. Before I breathe out what no longer serves. I invite you to join me. As we invite and allow the holy fire to flow in through and around us all, in every way, in every where, in every when. I'm going to have to keep adjusting the camera. Because the moon is rising fast. I'm also at ooh, 417. There we go. Hopefully, she'll rise into center frame. Okay doesn't like that so we'll put you back in the center so focus can decide that you're important can you do it there you go perfect <laughs> in the full moon's analogous to the height of life and the new moon is analogous to death. 
It's the darkness. In the cycles of uh, life, in the four seasons, winter is death. It's the cold before the renewal of life. In springtime, and uh, <laughs> The springtime is going to be amazing. This equinox has, is big energy. Because there's the equinox, there's a new moon, and then there's the Norus and the Hindu spiritual new year. For those who are celebrating the lunar solar calendar niarata ajir sahana kana tiara hatakatukuru hutukarsha and uh And in a land of death, while we are dead. One of the myths is that we're in the land of the three dreams. Where the first dream is reviewing our past life that we just exited. What did we learn from it? Did it match our soul mission? Did it last our did it match our intention for what we wanted? This is all it means by us weighing our soul. It is not that this is how we get to the afterlife, or this is how we get to ascend, or how we get to heaven. We as divine beings can go to heaven any time we want. As a matter of fact, part of us are going to heaven every now our vibration, every <sighs> every vibration that we emit is going to the entire universe, including heaven, to the realms of the divine. And we, with our soul group up in heaven, when we're dead when we transition we're evaluating this past life our soul is having the dream of the past life this past life and the second dream is we're seeing how that interplays our all of our experiences in this past life how does that interplay with our experiences in all of our lives, in our greater soul, our accumulation of all of our lives. How does it integrate? And that continues on to what does our soul still wish to experience? So that's the third dream. What do we want out of our next life? When springtime comes, it's simply the manifest. That's the cycle of manifestation. Here I am now. Let me look at my entire being. And what do I want to create now? So with the Holy Fire and the Law of Attraction, today, we're not going to focus on what we need to release. We're only going to focus on what we wish to bring in. We're going to focus on creation. We're going to focus on manifestation. Because at the highest forms of consciousness, there is no death. There is no destruction. There is only creation. There is only creation. 
There is no transformation. It's continual thought and creative thought and a new thought and a new thought and a new thought. There's the integration and then the new thought. What am I going to think next? Utakawata arahatakatiyada kurununo rohutukutsukaya toto. So it looks like every six minutes, every five minutes or so, I need to readjust. Sooner or later, I'll uh, zoom out. How's that? No, no. I'm right in the path of the runway. Take off runway. So take a moment. What is it that you want to create? What is it that your heart wants to create? As we allow the holy fire to flow in through and around our heart, we're reminding us of our true authentic selves. The holy fire lives in our heart centers. Your holy fire causes your divine light. It, it is the truest essence of yourself. Allowing that light to shine, allowing your spiritual fire to ignite, to burn, to consume those thoughts of limitation, and to inspire and ignite those thoughts of creation and light and divinity and that which you truly wish to create. Sahatiya nananara tokoruhoto. That is all that a creator being does, is that they understand that they are the light. And they create with no fear. They create with no ego, just that aspect of themselves, which is pure creational intent. Pure creational potential and inspiration. That nurturing of that intention, that nurturing of your essence, your true divine essence, that is the sacral chakra. That's why we're here at the water. <laughs> That's why we honor the water and the fire. But it's the spiritual water and the spiritual fire that nourishes us. That is our sustenance. That is the true sustenance, the true food of Anamaya. And in this physicality, in this idea of physicality, our breath is what links us to our nourishment, our sustenance in our heart centers, Niara. I think it's perfect that we're in the path of the takeoff runway. When are we going to take off? When are we going to ascend? Ascension is not really a goal. Try not to think of it that way. It's a state of being. And in our humanness, it is a momentary impermanent state of being. So be easy on yourself when you forget for a moment that you're divine. 
That's part of your plan. It's part of our plan as being human is to forget who we are so we can remember who we are. And then once we remember who we are to create and expand and cause expansion to be more than it was before. We get some uh, good light codes reflecting off the water. Gotta zoom out for that though. No, zoom out, please. <laughs> well, you can see it in real life. <laughs> Oh, there we go. 1.0, please. <laughs> Sometimes I think my uh, my phone has a voice interface. <laughs> there we go. Maybe I need 2.0. As I play with my phone. There we go. <laughs> There we go. There we go. See, isn't it gorgeous? As I hit my phone and understand. So breathe with me. With a calm mind, we can see ourselves in the reflections. Only in calm waters can we see a reflection. So who took an anaria rata catigarata? In the path of the runway. <sighs> Write down what you wish to manifest. Journal about it. Journal about it. Sihia <laughs> Happy full moon, my friends. Happy manifesting and universe. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. So I thank you, my friends, for sharing in my highest bliss. Make it a great day. Because why would you leave it up to anyone else?